let's have a look here. So it's number 12. Domain is the easiest. Okay. And the reason is, is that even if they give you the function, it's relatively easy to figure out what values of X would violate rules of mathematics. So if I had Y equal 1 over X, I would know that X cannot be 0. It could be anything else. So domain is always what X can be. Well, when you're looking at a graph and you're trying to, to figure out domain, train your eyes to look right and left. When you're looking at range, you want to look up or down. So if I'm looking right and left, that's the domain. What is the allowable domain for this function? Um, infinity? Yeah. Negative infinity to positive infinity. The easier way to say that is to all reals. But, but see how the line's going through on the x-axis? Doesn't that have something to play into it? No. Nope. Look at this, it's got an arrow on the end of it, okay? That means it goes all the way to negative infinity on the x-axis. Same way it goes to positive infinity on the x-axis. Just because it's pointing up doesn't mean it doesn't continue to move to the right. And it does forever. Okay? Okay. Okay. So domain is real clear. There's nothing that X can't be. I don't have any vertical asymptotes that I'm crossing. I don't have any uh, square roots of negative numbers that I'm dealing with. So domain is all real numbers. Now, when we're looking at range, we want to train our eyes to look up and down only. So if I continue that forever, and I continue that forever, what are the allowable values of range? Negative infinity and positive infinity? Yes, all reals again. There are no restrictions. There is no value of Y that this thing cannot attain, if you look at that graph. Okay? Now, let's look at the next one. What is the domain on the next one? What are all of the uh, values that X can be? Uh, positive infinity. Hold on. And hold on. Hold on. Always. No. First of all, you always start from the left. Okay. Well, if we're going to deal in interval notation, let's deal in it. Can this thing uh, be minus 4? No. Can it be minus 3? No. Can it be minus 2? No. There's minus 2 right there. Remember, we're looking horizontally. We are talking okay. about domain. So I'm, look, I'm training my eyes to not even see the vertical. We're just looking horizontally. It can be minus 2. It's minus 2 right there. So that's the first value it can be. And it actually needs a bracket, not a parenthesis, because it actually can be minus 2. It doesn't just have to be to the right of minus 2. Now, as I move to the right, How far to the right can it go? To infinity. There's your domain.
What's your range? Now, first of all, let's talk about something. This is not a function we're looking at. It's called a relation. It's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Nonetheless, you can still talk about domain and range of it. We certainly had a domain of it. What's the range? Look up and down. How far up can Y go and how far down can Y go? Mm. Three. Only that thing has an arrow on it. And because of the direction it's pointed, that means that it goes to positive infinity on the x-axis and that it actually goes to negative infinity on the y-axis. So this thing okay. goes all the way down to negative infinity and it goes all the way up to positive infinity and it covers all values in between. All right. Very important you see that. In other words, can y be 6? Well, not on this graph, but if I continue this thing far enough to the right, you bet. There'll be a y value of 6. Can y be 6 million? Yes. I just got to go far enough to the right. And y will eventually be 6 million. And y goes to infinity on both sides. Okay. Now, because you're struggling a little bit with it, um, let's do some rather simple ones. What's the domain? And then I'll graph this thing. This is hyperbolic. What is the domain? Look horizontally. Y equals negative infinity. Oh, hold, on. hold on. There's no Y in domain. It's all about oh. X. This is the X axis. That's the Y axis. The domain is all about X. What are the allowable values for X? I can see it from the graph, and I can figure it out from the function. Notice they didn't give us these other two functions. They just showed us the graph. Well, I'm giving you both. What can x be? Negative infinity. Okay, it's true. It goes all the way to negative infinity in that direction. And positive infinity. It's true. It goes all the way to positive infinity in that direction. There's one value it cannot be. What is it? What can you not do in math? Um, zero. Can't divide by zero. Yeah. You'll notice there is a vertical asymptote that runs at x equals zero that the function never touches. You cannot cross vertical asymptotes. So the domain is negative infinity to zero, and it cannot be zero, so it's a parenthesis, not a bracket, in union with zero to positive infinity. So that's domain. Now there's also a horizontal asymptote on this function. Notice that it's very difficult to make y be 0. What would you have to let x be for y to be 0? There isn't any number. In other words, a function is only 0 as if this numerator is 0, and that numerator is 1. And if you look at the graph of it, look, make your eyes look up and down. What is, what is y's available, or excuse me, allowable, numbers negative infinity and zero and then zero and infinity yep 
It's the same thing as the domain on this function. Okay. Now, if I make it a little bit more complicated, and I said y is equal to 1 over x minus 1, what about the range? Or, excuse me, what about the domain? What's the domain? It's the same hyperbolic function. I've just shifted it to the right one. Um, so would it just be negative infinity and infinity then? No, when you're thinking about domain, think about what x cannot be. That's always the way to look at domain. Don't think about what it can be. Think about what it can't be. What can it not be algebraically without even looking at the graph? It can't be one. Okay. It can certainly be any other number. So uh -huh. negative infinity to one in combination with one to positive infinity. So whenever you have this, you just set up an equation, x minus 1 equals 0, and that tells you what x cannot be. Because x minus 1 cannot be 0, therefore x cannot be 1. So domain is all about figuring out what x cannot be. How about if I said this? What's the domain? Um, draw the graph also. This graph starts right there and goes like that. So what's the domain looking at it graphically and also from what you know about this function? Um, Look at it uh, graphically. Let's start there. We're talking domain, so look left and right. Okay, let's go up here and look at the function. What can X be? What can it not be? Well, it can't be a negative number. Ah, now look at the graph. Do you see any negative values for X? No. Okay. So now look at the graph again and tell me what the domain is. Um, zero. To what? And to positive infinity. Okay. Does that zero have a parenthesis or a bracket next to it? Oh, bracket. Should be a bracket. Why? Because x can be zero. What do we know about this function? We can take the square root of zero. It's zero. You just can't take the square root of negative numbers. Have you had imaginary numbers yet? Um, I don't think so. Okay. We won't talk about that then. Uh, when you're talking domain and range, you're talking about you cannot take the square root of negative numbers. You can take the square root of zero. So both from the function and my graph, I get that as the domain. Now tell me the range. Um, look at the graph. Look up and down. What can y be? Uh, bracket zero, uh, negative infinity? No, positive infinity. Positive infinity. In other words, x can be any positive number. I can still take the square root of a million. I can take the square root of a billion. Cannot take the square root of negative one. So again, the domain and range are the same. But that's 
not that often. I keep giving you basic functions where the domain and range are the same, and uh, that's rarer than it is common. I'm just happening to give you basic elementary functions. And basic elementary functions are a good way to teach you about domain and range. Okay. Now, if I had something like this, now tell me the domain. Um, one. Not one. It can be a half. What's wrong with the square root of a half? Um. In other words, it can be any fraction as long as x is not zero. Well, now hold on. Let's take this one step at a time. The last one I gave you was this one. Okay? And the only restriction was x had to be greater than or equal to zero. Well, this is very similar, but not quite. In other words, we still have the restriction that you can't take the square root of negative numbers. But can x be 0 in this second case? Yes. Well, the square root of 0 is 0, which would have you dividing by 0. That is the first rule of math. And I, I mean that for 2,000 years. The first rule of math is you shall not divide by 0. So in this case here, the domain is restricted even more. It's not x is greater than or equal to 0. x has to be greater than 0. In other words, I can't have this denominator being 0. Up here, I'm fine with x being 0. Square root of 0 is 0. y is 0. But down here, I can't divide by 0. So this domain is more restrictive. This goes in other words, this is 0 to infinity, whereas this one over here is bracket 0 to infinity. Okay. Okay. So, let's move on. It's the first thing we need to do to graph that thing on the left. Um, set y equal to ex to itself? Not to itself. You want to get y all alone. In other words, if we can get it into y equal mx plus b format, then we'll be able to graph it, right? I mean, you know how to graph these. You yeah. Start, you start at the y-intercept, you apply the slope to get a second point, and you connect the two points. We are graphing linear equations. What that means is they're always straight lines. Well, this is the classic format for a straight line. So turn this function, excuse me, turn this equation into where it looks like this. What do I got to do with that 3x? Subtract it. Okay, so what do you got? So you got y equals 5x minus 7. Okay. Can you graph that? That's in that format right there. That's y equal mx plus b. m is 5, b is minus 7. So where do we begin? How do we graph this? Um, where do you start? Whenever you're graphing, go ahead. Negative 7. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That point is on our graph. Find me a second point on the graph. Um, negative 2, negative 1. I'm not sure where you got that from. The best way to do it is apply the slope. 
slope is five in this case. Slope yeah. is rise over run. So it's five over one. So because all you got to do is go up five and to the right one, and you'll get your second point. Is that what you did? Yeah. So I go up five and to the right one. That is one negative two. Is that what you said? I yeah. I didn't even realize it because I wasn't sure you had applied the slope to get that point. We did. And now we have two points, and two points make a straight line. So all you need is a straight edge, run it between those, and you got your graph. This one. Do a little algebraic manipulation on this. Notice that we got to get it into y equal mx plus b. So what do I do here? Um, you add 4x. Well, and then, okay, I mean, we can do it that way, and I can bring the y over on the left side. Then I'm going to have a negative coefficient. I don't really care if it's y equal mx plus b format or mx plus b equals y. Either one, you'll graph exactly the same way. You start with b, and you apply a slope. So let's leave y on the right side where it has a nice positive coefficient. Let's get rid of everything that's on the right side other than y. So add 9. Okay, so now I got minus 4x plus 9 equals 2y. Now what? And then... Do you have to divide it by 2 to get y by itself? Uh-huh. So that gives me minus 2x plus 9 halves. Got to divide that by 2 also equals y. Now we have it in y equal mx plus b format. Where do I start the graph? Um, at... Minus 2x. Oh, you start at B. The y-intercept. B is the y-intercept. That's B. That's a number. Always. But I thought, isn't the equation just backwards? Doesn't matter. I'll, uh, I'll put it like this if, you, if it makes you feel better. They're both the same thing. Yeah. In other words, okay. I don't need the y on the left to be able to graph this thing. The only two factors I'm using to graph it are b and m. So who cares whether the y is on the right side or the left side? Okay. Okay, so I'll, we'll put it like that. Now where do you start? Um, so now you start at 9 over 2. Which is 4.5. One, two, three, four and a half, right there. Okay. Now, how do you apply the slope? T tell me to um, go up and down, right and left. That's how you apply the slope. Uh, and you can do a bunch of things. I can go up and to the left, or I can go down and to the right. Either one of them gives me my second point that's going to give me my line. So up two to the left one. Okay. So if I go up two, that's right there. And if I go left one, does that give me the right slope, the right sign on the slope? Whereas the, sl the most important thing is, is after you graph it, Check and make sure if your slope has the right sign on it. In other words, we're looking at a negative slope there, and it should be negative. But if you went up to and to the right one, you'd have a positive slope, which would not be correct. We can see okay. right here that the slope is negative. So a lot of students will say up and over. 
And the reason they get away with that, you wouldn't think anybody would get away with that, but 95% of the students of Colorado, that's what their answer is, is up and over. And every one of them might say, well, up and over which way? Because it matters. Up and to the right is not the same as up and to the left. And yeah. it doesn't matter as long as you end up with the slope that you know it has to be. In other words, if I had gone up and over to the right, I'd ended up with a positive slope. Well, I can see it. It can't be positive. It's got to be negative. So I got to go either up and left, or I got to go down and right. Notice they're the same. Up and left is the same as down and right. Yeah. It gives me that same line. Okay. All right. I think that's all I have time for tonight. Okay, that's fine. I will talk to you tomorrow at, what I say, 4 o'clock, I think so? Yeah, I think it's 4. All right, Locke. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome.